and lift our, 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 let's bow our heads and lift our hearts to heaven. Lord Jesus, I pray that you look upon us all with eyes of mercy today. I pray that you rest your healing hands upon each and every one of us. Yes, I pray that you remove any foolishness that's in us and replace it with wisdom. Oh, Father, I pray that you remove any fear with us and give us strength. Yes. Father, yes. I pray that you're with us everywhere that we go. No matter what we do, we do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. Let yes. it always be in the name of Jesus Christ, for we are your humble yes. service, Father. We thank you for our, our wonderful prophet H. Walker and all that he's done for us and all that he's instilled for us. We thank you, Father, for saving our souls from the uh, fire of the minds, Father. We pray that you're with, uh, with Israel and with the President Trump. We pray that you protect him and give him a hedge of protection around him each and every day, Father. We pray that we strengthen him. Make sure he keeps that strong backbone. Oh, yes. Make sure he keeps pressing forward and he does it in your name, Father. Yeah, Father, I pray for each and every one of my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that you heal their bodies today and anything yes. that they're going through, Father. I pray that you give them... Uh, encouragement to, to keep pressing forward today. I pray for the new sister that's here today, Father. I pray that you heal her of any affliction that she's got in her body, Father. I pray that you open her eyes and show the way. I pray that you touch Pastor Sowers so that we can get this word out as clear as a glass of ice cold water. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you understand, say amen. Amen. Now, whether that was a mini tornado or what, or whatever was that, Snatched that tree so and placed it straight on top of it. Two cars. Yeah, right. Right. Amen. Right. Now I wasn't in that car. And you got to look close to see the damage. Right. So we thank God for his tender loving kindness. Right. Now many can look at the negative part. Car loss. But a life saved. That's right. Hallelujah. You know there's a slight difference. Hallelujah. That's what we praise him. Yeah. And thank God. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. What he's done for us. And what he continues to do for us. We are a blessed church. Yeah. Now again, the scripture is very clear. And the reason why we go to the Bible is to try to bring us up to a level 
on the, on the point of order, uh, Elder Kenya sat down for five days for wounding a precious soul. Now it's my job to correct, and I correct out of love. Sometimes we, you, some, you know, when you're working around devils all day long, sometimes you come home and you got a little bit heaviness on you, and you say things that you really don't mean, but you do things instantly, like. So we have to learn how to correct ourselves, and sometimes we are not feeling the best. Sometimes it's best to go somewhere and pray. And ask God to lift that or remove that heaviness from you, lest you say something that's not decent and in order. Now again, we must understand correction is for a reason. He said he chastises those who he loves. And that's, catch hold of that. He don't chastise those who don't love. He chastises those who he loves. Because he's trying to bring us back, maybe we've drifted over a little bit, he's trying to bring us right back into that straight and narrow. Yeah. Let's be aware, church, of always of that straight and narrow. Because anybody can slip just a little bit. Yeah. And you know the story about Lot's wife. She looked back. Didn't say how far back she looked. She might just turn her head and glance. But God said, don't look back. The past is gone. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Take hold of that. Learn that. Run with that. And keep that deep down inside of you. A new creation in Christ Jesus. And don't let negative forces, I say this again, come that would cause you to deflect or to have anything or bear any malice against anyone. And I've said this before and I'm saying this for a reason. You don't let no one talk about your leader. Amen. And that was proven clearly in the instructions God gave to Aaron and Mary. Uh, don't, yeah. don't try to correct the leader. All right. Yeah. Follow the word of God. Might be good to sometimes pray for your leader. All right. Hallelujah. I, I wish some of you knew how easy this journey is. Yeah. <laughs> I wish Moses could come down and testify. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moses didn't do nothing wrong. Right. And they came against him anyhow. Yeah. But I'm saying, we are all in this together. Yeah. Let's carry our cross together, praying together, right. and praying for each other, not yeah. praying against each other. Yeah, right. Sheep on tree. Oh, uh huh. Now I know the Lord going to punish him. Glory, hallelujah. Yeah. What kind of prayer is that? All right. What kind of thought is that? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well, glory, anyhow. <laughs> Sometimes when you think how the devil can get in a person's imagination <laughs> and turn the, closely turn them around to thinking that right is wrong and wrong is right. All right. And say, I'm, thank you, Jesus. Right. Nobody was hurt. Hallelujah. Right. Um, I know the Lord won't punish him. Mm. Well, praise God. Sometimes you better correct your thoughts. Yes. Or God might come suddenly and correct you. Amen. Let's learn how to be together and be for real. Yes. As loving and caring for each other. Amen. As God has commanded us to do. Because everybody's going one day stand before the judgment throne. Give me a Revelation chapter. Chapter 20. Read. And I saw a great white throne. I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, uh -huh. from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Those who fled from that face, that's the face of God at the judgment. Yeah. Somebody don't want to see him because they're not going to see him in peace. Mm -hmm. They're going to see him in judgment. You don't want that to happen, church. Mm -hmm. And we are so close now to the finish line if you just look at current events, 
they're getting ready just as sure as I'm here. Put a Hindu woman for president of the United States and God blessed America to be the guiding light in these latter days for the rest of the world to follow. There's no other country been blessed like the United States and have more churches than the United States serving God, but not serving God in the intent of righteousness, but nevertheless, they have the chance to serve God. Everybody in America got a chance to follow true holiness. Yeah. But God has set that example. That's why one of the first laws given to the forefathers, don't touch that religious movement. Yeah. Now he did this to protect not only the Baptists and the Methodists, which he don't care too soon about, but in order to get an overall realm of the churches, there's a Pentecostal church in the middle. So if he protects one church, he got to protect that little Pentecostal church. All right. Can you see God working? So and then he gives everybody an opportunity to live, leave away from uh, a, a wrong church and come to a right church. Because what? One day. Read that again. And I saw a great white throne. I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Now Jesus was sitting on that throne. Uh -huh. And there was found no place for them. We read the letter part. And there was found no place for them. You can't run from God. Amen. And you can't hide from Him. This is why we've got to get this thing right now. Get it right down here. Don't try to get it fixed when you stand before the throne. That's not going to do you no good. So tests and trials and persecutions come against us because God has got to try us and prove our character and our relationship with him by fire. You're going to go through something before you get to that judgment throne. And we are going through something down here right now. Let's not complain about it. Amen. Let's do it with joy and a singleness of heart. Give me a, I'm going to come back to that when I want Acts, the second chapter, pick me up in verse 40. Watch close. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself, Save yourself. from this untoward generation. Hallelujah. Read. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. Now, I, I'm saying, and I've told you this before, them that gladly received the word. Now, Peter was preaching to maybe four or five thousand, but only the ones that gladly received the word. Everybody here is supposed to be gladly receiving the word and the instructions and not carrying a uh, little chastisement with any bitterness. No, it comes to correct you now. Yeah. So that the trumpet God sounds at night and you got to stand for the judgment throne, you are corrected now. Yeah. So that you've got a chance not to make that same mistake over and over again. Read. Then they that gladly received, gladly the, word received the word were baptized. Uh -huh. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now wait. You remember the scripture says, before the end cometh, there shall be a great falling away. Now, in this dispensation of time where Peter's preaching, that's when he's building up the church. We're in the final dispensation where there's going to be a falling away from the church. And know you not the perilous time shall come? There will be lovers of their own self rather than lovers of God. Don't you see that today? Yeah. I said before this Kindle woman, boy, they're trying their best to get her to be president. Yeah. And she boasts about baby murder. Yes. Even trying to pass laws with eight months and nine months. That's right. Woman can kill the baby. Yep. And it's not going to be no crime. What is wrong with this world? Well, how would you kill a little tiny baby? She brags about being uh, the Attorney General of California and performing the first same-sex marriage. Yeah, yeah. She ain't no preacher, but she come perform uh -huh. a marriage. Where she get authority from? The attorney general can't, is not supposed to marry nobody. A preacher's right. supposed to marry somebody. Yeah. But a preacher can't marry two men. All right, how about that? A preacher can't marry two women. Why? The Bible says it's against nature. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's against the common law of humanity. It's against biological factors. That proves within itself. Something ain't right about it. All right. Now why is she gonna brag about it? And when's the last time you ever seen her with a dress on? Oh, if y'all ever noticed? Right, what did the Bible say about cross dressing? All right. Uh -huh. Women should not wear that pertaining to a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. 
That's Bible. Yes. Well, I just don't see it that way. That's because you can't see. All right. Hallelujah. We try to give you a pair of glasses. All right. By focus. So you can see clearly that you might escape the judgment throne. Yes. Go back to that passage. They stood before the judgment throne of God. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Now watch close. And there was found no place for them. Uh -huh. And I saw the dead. No place for them means there's nowhere when that judgment throne comes. Now after the trump of God sounds the end of all flesh. You can't go nowhere. Yeah. It's should get in that line. And you know what that line is. Yeah. Either they worship me, go this way, and those who uh, have mocked me and scorned me, you go that way. Right, but everybody's going to stand for that judgment throne. Read. And I saw the dead, small and great, small and great, stand before God. Now, small and great means whether you're a president or a vice president, or whether you ain't nobody sitting in the back of the pew. How do you somebody in sight of God? And everybody is going to stand for that judgment throne. Read. And the books were open. Books were open. And another book was open. Wait, another book was open. Get me Romans chapter six. Jump into verse one. Y'all hang with me a minute. I know where I'm going. All right. Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Now God is starting his church, his New Testament church. Read that again. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound? Because we are under grace. God forbid. God forbid. Let me tell you something, church. Don't think that you can commit a sin and God is going to forgive you because you make a mistake. Let's not call sin a mistake. Yes. Amen. 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 Now, you didn't make a mistake when you took that drink of liquor, when you drank that glass of beer. Yes. So you, you drank a glass of beer at home. Why do you drink a glass of beer? Somebody said, well, God ain't going to hold you accountable for drinking a glass of beer. It ain't going to make you drunk. Why well, you drink a glass? All right. Well, you're not, you never take a tablespoon and take a sip. <laughs> you drink a glass because you want to get that buzz. You want to get that feeling. Then you go to bed. Well, you say, yeah, but I, I went to bed. But you're still drunk because you change your mental euphoria by an intoxicant that changes your whole equilibrium. You high, or you got a buzz, whatever you want to call it, you're still drunk in sight of God. So I'm saying, we have to understand not to fall into any type of quagmire by taking little things. Oh, well, God don't care nothing about this. That's, he ain't thinking about that. If God told you, don't do it, don't do it. Amen. If God said a drunkard should not inherit the kingdom of heaven, that means any of you trying to take a glass of beer or a tablespoon of beer. <laughs> it's for a reason. It sure don't taste like pop. <laughs> don't taste like no iced tea. <laughs> and you drink it for a reason. <laughs> to get high. All right. Now maybe you can get a glass of beer and get high. And go to bed. Yeah, but I went straight to bed. You're still drunk. <laughs> you just got drunk in bed. That's all. <laughs> but you're still drunk. I'm saying, we cannot use little innuendos that the, the devil can bring up yeah. to cause us to want to do something that you know is not right, but God ain't going to hold me accountable for that. Anytime you go to heaven and you stand for the judgment throne of God, he's going to judge you according to this book. Read that again, the latter part. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Yes. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer how therein? we who are now baptized and saved, how can we go back you live a life of sin. Read. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized, as we're baptized into, into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism in into the death. water. Buried with him. Uh huh. By baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead yes. by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Wait. I go back to that passage trip in, in uh, Revelation. When you come out the walls of baptism, you walk in the newness of life. Why? Because you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things, the old life is gone. 
and can never come back unless you go back out and leave God and go back into that lifestyle. That's when it comes back. But as long as you stay away from it, as long as you follow that straight and narrow, can nobody bring your past up against you. Amen. You'd be surprised. When I'm dead, prophet ain't going to do it now. But when I'm dead, they're going to think about all, oh, what he used to do in the past. Some of it might be true, but some of it might be a lie. All right, Father. But one thing's certain. Yeah, I gambled. Never did drink. Smoked cigars. Never did smoke cigarettes. Never bought a pack of cigarettes in my life. Gambled and uh, smoked cigars and maybe a few other things you can throw in for fun. Amen. But a lot of things they might say that I brought three or four banks and got away with it and all <laughs> something. Listen, my character is a reflection of me. Amen. And my character before I was saved had nothing to do with me. That guy is gone. But some things don't imagine I did that they didn't do. So <laughs> at least do that right. So we have to understand the Bible is to change a quality of character that you can stand before God and be judged. Because you're going to be judged according to what you have done in life. Not the past, but the current life. While you're in church now. When you're in church, you're not supposed to reflect back on that dead life. That dead life is gone. And the character and the qualifications of that character Lying, cheating, and getting angry, and getting mad. But what is, how you gonna come to church mad? Mad at who? Man. Ain't nobody done nothing to you in the church. <laughs> Preach the gospel. The gospel sometimes make you flinch. Yeah, it will. But what, what has anybody ever done? What have I ever done to anybody in this church but treated you right? All right, hallelujah. Taught you the word of God. Bought you cars, and give you this and give you that. Whenever you was broke, reach in my pocket. Prove me wrong. You can't. Gave you a place to live. Now wait, I never promised you the uh, Hilton Hotel. All right. I never promised you that. And God ain't never promised you that down here. You go through a little bit of uncomfort. True. But when the church is trying its best to try to get you away from that little uncomfort. It ain't no, really no big deal. It's a good experience. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember. Praise God. I got saved and, man, didn't have no electricity for a whole week. But the Lord sure blessed. Hallelujah. Well, you never got sick. You never still never missed a meal. Hallelujah. Went to bed without no light, but you wouldn't even go to bed hungry. All right. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And he'd go to bed with, the, uh, with no temperature 105. Uh, I wonder, my goodness, I, I can't even see to get that medicine cabinet. All right. Now, you, you got a medicine cabinet built in. All right. All you got to do is reach back and get it. Say Jesus a few times, and it, 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 it'll work every time. Right. I'm 92 years old, and it works all the time. All right, God's glory. Right. So never try to correct a teacher because you disagree with the teacher. Don't do that because you carry that right into the judgment throne of God. Mm. And if it's not repented of, that's, that's very dangerous, church. So I teach you in advance. Don't think on negative thoughts and don't let somebody come around you. And they always go to a person yep. they know that will accept it. Uh -huh. Always. Right. Always. Yep. They won't go to someone, I guarantee you they don't go to the evangelist. Wagner, you know, Pastor this and something, and I, I just don't know what you think. What, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, now what do you think? But you go to somebody else who's weak mm -hmm. in their faith, and they resolve. You know why? Because there's something down in their nature that wants to hear a negative thought that you're trying to plant. Right. Birds of a feather do what? Flock together. Oh, you don't never see no pigeons with eagles, do you? <laughs> but they're both birds. Let's not entertain false, uh, I might say, false emotions that you know is contrary to the Word of God. And I've said this before, and if, if a person would stop and reject them and rebuke them, you know they'll never do that again with you. Right. But when you don't, 
you know what? Next time, next week or two weeks later, come right to you. Uh -huh. What? You know where to go. Right. Mm. We and one accord. That's a conspiracy. You may not say nothing, but if you don't rebuke it and correct it, you in agreement with them. Right, now, the Bible says concerning homosexuality, it said not only them who do such, but those who are in agreement with such. I shared before, that's a conspiracy. Yeah. If I carry a uh, uh, Elder Rick, we gonna rob the bank. Yeah. Elder Rick driving the car, ain't got no gun. I go in there with the gun, I say, let's go. I got the money. <laughs> now, I ain't giving a dime yet. Police stop us two blocks down the road. They give me 20 years, but guess how many years they're going to give Elder Rick? Same 20. But I, Elder Rick said, I ain't got no gun. All I do is drive the car. But you must have been in the same accord with him, or you wouldn't be together in him, with him, knowing he going to rob a bank. He can cry all he want. I ain't had no gun, and I didn't know what he was going to do. But you should have. Amen. Hallelujah. You know when he come out, you know when he when he come out with that bag of money. And I know that you didn't drive me straight to the police station. Oh wow, oh wow. I didn't know he, what he was doing. But you saw him with the bag of money. You thought you found it? So we, we're not using common sense. When someone coming with a negative thought, stop it right now. Right, stop. Look. I'm gonna hear. Uh -huh. I'm gonna go no further. That's my leader. Yes, right. That's my brother. Yes. That's my sister. Yes. Now, don't try to correct me for correcting you. All right. I can correct you, but you can't correct me. Yes. All right. Moses corrected the people, but the people couldn't correct Moses. That's right. Hallelujah. So let's do things decent and in order. All right. I'll move back until uh, that 20th yes, chapter yes, of Revelation. Yes, sir. Keep, keep reading. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened. Wait, another book was opened. I taught you about that book, didn't I? Yeah. See, when you're born, a book is open. But you are, when you are reborn, another book is open. And the dead would judge what? And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. Book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. According to what? Their works. Well, I thought we were saved by grace and not by works. Amen. You see why you need a teacher? Is that Bible saved by grace and not by works? Yes. Yeah. But is that wrongly applied most of the time? Yes. Yeah. Because don't tell me living right in works. Don't tell me not lying and cheating is not works. Yeah. Right. Don't tell me not going to the liquor store and getting a bottle of liquor ain't works. That is works. But it's good works yeah. by me not doing that. It's bad works if I do that. So we are saved by grace. But that's grace that is taught. It's taught out of context. Grace saved you when you couldn't save yourself when you was out in the world. So it took the grace of God, which means the mercy of God, to save you. Yeah. Because you couldn't save yourself. You couldn't deliver yourself from the condition and the predicament you was in. So I'm saying, brothers and sisters, we have to understand the importance of living a life that God has established for us in the book. And there's no way you can get around it. You, you, can't, you can't slide this way. You can't slide that way. You've got to follow the Word of God. And if the Word of God tells you to do something, you have to do it. So how can a person be saved and they're going to vote for a Hindu woman for president? And you go to, to church every Sunday to the Baptist church. Baptist church ain't never been right. Yeah. And never will be right. And you won't look the other way and close your eyes. Here's a Hindu woman. First of all, she rejected the Christ. And Jesus said, except a man believe that I am he. All right. He'll die in his sins. Right. You got to know who God is. And the reason why you don't know because you don't want to learn. But if you seek after God, you'll find him. Ashes shall be given, not the door will be open. God ain't going to turn nobody away who's looking for salvation. Yeah. But how many people say they look for salvation but really don't want to find it? Because it costs something. Yeah. It costs, I have to give up my emotion when I don't like uh, this sister, I don't think she's saved. Well, are you God? Are you saved? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm saved, but sister, I don't think she's saved. You don't think. 
how to make the sister think you ain't saved either. <laughs> and I wonder if you are. There ain't but one judge, he, he's in heaven. So what I'm trying to do is put you in a position where there's no excuse to fail or falter in this journey. We have to follow it according to the word of truth. Now give me first Timothy. I'm gonna kind of clear up something right here. Give me first Timothy two and nine. Amen. Now we're going a little bit deep water here. You remember the Babylonian woman, she was dressed in and had all the kind of stuff in her hair and everything. Uh -huh. Okay, two and nine. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in the, modesty. In like manner that men adorn themselves. That women adorn themselves. The, the, men. Women. Boys. Women. Adorn themselves. In modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls. Now, how many know the difference between broided hair and braided hair? The, let me show you something. The women from from the land of Shana, Babylonian women. Yeah. The prostitutes had a trick of braiding the hair with gold stri strips, yeah. and the Egyptians learned this custom yeah. with gold and red threads and uh -huh. different colored threads in their braids. Yes. That was a signal, and when God said that would the braiding hair, it meant entwining things and colors to make the hair, the hair look pretty right. and decorating it. Yes. That's what God meant in that text. And it took me a long time to find this out and research it, but you have to understand certain things. So, and plotting, give me First Peter 3 and 3. Let's see what he says. Whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of plaiting the hair. Uh, now, Peter said plaiting the hair. Now, there are two different uh, instructions from two different apostles. Now, the plaiting of the hair, the Hebrews would let their hair grow and comb straight down. That's plaiting. Straight down. No, nothing to it that is straight down. He said, now we're plaiting the hair. Now, the Egyptians had a custom similar to that, letting it part of the hair straight down. And the other, I don't know, they would shave it sometimes, they would fall, fall, take it back. But the plaiting of hair went straight down. How do the Hebrew women dress? First of all, they wrapped their hair put it in a bun and took a bone stick and yeah. stuck it through there and then put their head cover on if they were going outside. That was their standard of dress. That's not plaiting the hair, that's balling up the hair and that's the style that they used. Now, heathen customs, they let the hair fall straight. Greeks did it. Yeah. I don't know about the Roman women, but I know the Greeks did it. That, that was cutting the hair. That's what Peter was talking about. In other words, what he's trying to do, and the other apostle, they're trying to keep you from adopting heathen styles of dress. Yes. Now, nowhere did it say men should not have braided hair, broided hair. <laughs> so, a lot of times when you're caught up in fixations, it's not biblical. Now, there's another thing that you have to understand. There are certain passage scripture that were not in the Bible. One was, there are three that bear record in that. Get that for me right quick, daughter. I'm going to show you. Now, I, I'm not trying to discourage you of the Bible. That's why God sent a teacher yeah. to teach you. Sometimes you got to do some research. Read. For there are three that bear record in heaven. That was never in the Bible. Yeah. Never. In, now, when I say Bible, I'm talking about the original Hebrew scrolls yes. or the Greek manuscripts, it was put in, depending on what scholar you read, either the second printing of the King James Bible or the third printing of the King James Bible. There were three major uh, teachings. And that was put either in the second or the third. That is not biblical because you can't prove it by the Greek scrolls or Hebrew manuscripts. Right. And another one was uh, when they said, Paul said, a man ought not to have long hair. Yes. The word long was never in that scripture text. All right. yeah. Now, Paul did disavow the Nazarite vow. And there's nothing wrong with that. I never said the Nazarite vow would take you to heaven. Never mentioned that. Never told you that. But what I'm saying, if the apostles took the vow 
And all the men, you ain't gonna go, you ain't gonna cut your hair, right. ain't gonna shave your beard. That's all it meant. Mm -hmm. So, but it did say, man ought not to shave his head or his face. Yeah. Excuse me, but that's what it said. Yeah. Now, there's nowhere in the Bible where that was corrected. Mm -hmm. Now, again, when Paul said, "I said, shameful man have long hair," again, the word "length" "long" was not in the Bible. It meant fixed hair, and you can go to the Greek lexicon and I'll prove it to you and you bring the Greek lexicon to me. F-I-X means fixed, don't it? Yes. Yeah. The Hebrew word was... Uh, the Greek word. Greek word was... Kameo. Kameo. K-A-M-E-A-M-E-O, I believe. Yeah. Kameo. Yeah. Which meant to fix the hair. Yeah. So a lot of times people get misinterpreted because you know why? They want that, to breathe like that. But here's a preacher. He goes to that scripture, but he forget about the one where it said you're not to put a razor on your head. All right. <laughs> and then his head is shining, and take the reach and put it on to make it shine more. Because he's on the TV camera. All right, Bob. <laughs> Something wrong. We don't try to add on or take away. We just teach the truth of the yeah. Bible. Now, I said, that's right, Bible will not take you to heaven. No. Take, if you want, want to cut your head, cut your head. Don't shake it. All right. You can cut your head if you want to. But if I'm the leader, and I'm trying to follow the example that Jesus set for his apostles. I'm trying to look like the apostles and Jesus. So I'm going to take, you know, I'm going to take the Bible. Now, because Paul said he didn't going to take it, that's a between Paul. But he didn't tell you not to take it. Hallelujah. Now, Absalom pulled his hair. That means he trimmed the hair. Because it was getting obviously too long. Yeah. I do it about every, used to do it about every six months. Mm -hmm. But what I do, wet my hair and take a pair of scissors and bam, that's it. <laughs> Go on back. But I don't cut it. All right, Bob. And when your beard get long, sometimes, now I make mistakes because I call myself hitting here and here. But sometimes I dip in too deep. <laughs> Right. But I still got my beard. All right, right. I ain't putting no razor on. I ain't shaving. All right, right. I still got my hair. All right. What I have got. So, so right, right. we have to understand certain things other preachers get to try to, I don't know what they're trying to do, but they're trying to twist the scripture in a certain way that is not realistic and is not real. It's counterfeit. Anytime you tell a person, you can go and get, get your head shaved, you can shave your face. That is not biblical. The Bible says a man not to put a razor on his head, and there's no in the New Testament scripture where well, that's corrected. So, I'm trying to go to heaven. I'm going to try to look like the apostles, and I'm going to try to act like the apostles, because they tried to look like Jesus and try to act like Jesus. And I'm in that same ballpark. And so are you. So, a little clarity there, and, uh, what we're trying to do, brothers and sisters, is get enough in you mm -hmm. that you can withstand the half-truths and lies that might come by TV or radio. And there's uh, many of them out there. Mm -hmm. And they interview all these preachers, they interview them on TV, especially during the convention, and now one of them will come to me. Do they know I'm here? I think they do. Yeah. Because every now and then I can pick up some of the things they say that they, I know they got from me. Uh -huh. Well, I'm still here. Yeah, you call me, and I, I interview for free. <laughs> ain't got to pay me nothing, and I pay my own airfare. Yeah, yeah. Ain't that sweet? <laughs> but they don't want to hear nothing I got to say because I'm coming from the book. And I'll take them hypocrite preachers and make a fool out of them. All right. That's why they don't want to hear too much I got to say. Yes. But brothers and sisters, I'm, make, I'm raising you all up to a level. Well, can nobody rebuke your lifestyle and can nobody correct you who is not following after you? This is what it's about. Teaching them to observe whatsoever Jesus said that I have commanded you. And Lord, I'm with you even to the end of the world. So you've got the word of God in you. It's up to you to keep that word deep inside you. Now, it's not going to be easy. It is a struggle day by day. But what I'm trying to get, let's not have all the, all the enemies we got outside that door. Let's not have no enemies inside the door. Right, right. This is important. We are small 
church, and we need each other. We need the camaraderie. We need the love for each other and the prayer at night for my brother and my sister. Yes. Don't, and they don't pray no prayer. Lord, you, you know you're going to punish him. Mm -hmm. I saw it. Mm -hmm. Please don't pray no prayer like Amen. that. Right. Praise God. Mm -hmm. you, you, listen, spankings come around. Mm -hmm. There ain't no one child get a spanking. Mm -hmm. And you don't want the Lord to spank you. Oh, no. That's why I'm trying to spank you a little bit now. Amen. So, mm -hmm. let's leave here in one accord. We are the true church. It's proven. We are the true church. Yeah. And can't nobody say, I'm not blessed. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm 92. Right. I know I'm blessed. Hallelujah. I am highly favored. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> you see that tree almost? Yeah. yeah. Almost. Yeah. Can we go to the questionnaire? Yeah. How many is this tree? Man. Well, that ain't bad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Evangelist Wagner will close out. Amen. I want to give you this to my life, all honor, and the right of Bishop Coffey. Walking is dedicated, faithful, so out to Jesus, and our sweet spirit, our late, like lady mother walker, and led to the example. Thank God for profit, amen, teaching him is a blessing that he gives us the word back from Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, back, constantly yeah. feeding us the word to get us through, get our gas, amen, that we're going to work and keep our light shining, like you said, come to church, amen, happy, amen, glad to be in church, and you say, hey, glad and daily, so, you know, if you got a frown, come and get that frown and put on a right. smile, so I thank God the word has made us a smile, and then when you look at the news, that, that's fake smile, and they doing on the news talking about, oh, we, we are, she's going to do this, she's going to do that. No, sit down. They need to sit down. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not to turn it off. I can get that, that whole week of that uh, fakeness. I'm just, right. oh, and then if you looked at it yesterday, I'm like, oh, click off. You got eight years of mess <laughs> that we yeah. had with Obama. But thank God he said, don't, don't want to stop this race. You know, we got to keep running this race, not to stop and give up. We're going to be tested by fire, and it's a blessing. When you look at that truck, you say, thank you, Jesus, my goodness. Because, I mean, it could have been, think about it, you know, the other books pulling up when it came down, you know, just things like that. Yes. You know, so it was a blessing. I was headed to work, and the elder said, go back. I wonder if cars are backing up. Uh -huh. And I went around the other way to go to work. And then I said, oh, my goodness, get off that morning. I said, thank you, Jesus. You know, I was like, what's going on? But I know we're covered by the blood. Amen. And, Hallelujah. and you got to thank you, Jesus. Not be right. negative. You, you know, I pray in the morning, pray on, at night, pray for yeah. my prophet. Amen. The church Hallelujah. family. Yeah. I hope y'all pray for each other and pray yeah. for me. Amen. You know, what you got needs for. If you don't, still pray. But I thank right. God, Hallelujah. you know, say be glad in church. And it's going to be a falling away. You know, that's look around all the years. They're going to fall away because people are going to love themselves. And he so said, you will be judged according to the Bible and give up that old life. You know, we've got to follow a straight and narrow way. Give up the old life and come down in Jesus' name. We gave up that foolishness and stop the foolishness. Because, yeah. you know, that's the Baptist. Take it back, whatever. Let them, let them have their little party in the Baptist church. And uh, what are they doing? Uh, you know, let, them, let that stay out. Like Prophet said, we got enough enemies when you going to work and dealing with the devil, All right. people, the spirits. We don't want to bring the spirit of the devil into church. We want to bring some happiness in here because, you, you know what, I can feel that. And you know what, I'm going to get away from you. Whatever you're bringing in, get off me because I don't want it. Don't, that's like having a, 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 a spider and you're going to bite. No, <laughs> baby, get back. <laughs> spider going to get back. Because I'm trying to come to church and feel what God's given us. And you know, it's a blessing to come to church because you go to work all week and you got to rebuke those spirits and stay in the spirit and let your light shine. You know, whatever you got going on, and, you know, like I said, I shut up. You know, if you're in a bad mood, be quiet. Go pray, you know. Don't even say nothing. Sometimes you just right. say, shut your mouth. 
and say, Lord, help me to sing a song. And I'll turn on something <laughs> and start humming and say, thank you, Jesus. And you're going to feel something. If you don't, you got to keep singing. you got to keep singing. It's about the faith walk. And that's the prophecy. The faith walk. Yeah, your car is torn. You don't got this. You don't got that. You don't got this. So what? It's a lot of people in the third floor uh, world. So even the Philippines, they have water, no running water. They have no lights. They have nothing. Yeah, right. and me and Vanjeff was burning up. We thought, whoo, what was going on? But these people live like that. Our back sweating and everything. Mm -hmm. We thinking like, oh gosh. And they're praising the Lord and no lights. And we, we went in the house and we were having church in their the house with in the dark. Mm -hmm. But we were so comfortable. Like they said, American. We're so spoiled. Yeah. But these yeah, people man. are. Uh, so blessed and they happy and going down in Jesus' name in the ocean and things. You know, we take things for granted and you worry about small things. My goodness, go to a third world, like Papa said. You've probably been in the army, I mean, the service and been all over and seen things. You'll be like on your knees, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the small things that you have. If you have been to a third world country, which we have in our experience, and it's truly, those people are poor. You think we poor? No. We're rich in spirit. We're rich in Jesus. And that's what you got to take the spirit with you wherever you go. Like Prophet say, take it out to church. Take it with you. Somebody wrong naked spirit. Praise the Lord. Keep on walking. You ain't got to say praise the Lord to me because guess what? I'm praising the Lord anyway. <laughs> Look, I'm just, you you got to move me because your, your emotions are all uptight and mad at you. Be mad at yourself. But uh, let me shut down. Let me shut up and sit down. But I'm just saying, that that's life. Yes. This is life. This is real. And like Prophet said, you're going to go one way. One day, you're going to make a choice. Stand in that line or stand in that line. Don't be in church and come to church and, and play in church. Because one day, we got to leave. You don't know when you're going to leave. you got to say, Lord, I want to go with you, Jesus, so I can see your face right. in peace. Right. And nobody else in peace, I want to see Jesus' face in peace. And that's what it's about. Come to church, being for real. Loving each other, love first. You get do you love yourself? You know, love Jesus, love the prophet, and just be happy if you can. Cut a step, cut a smile. I'm gonna stand and be dismissed. Amen. May the Lord watch, May the Lord watch. between me and thee, between me and thee. While, we're absent, while we're absent, one from another, one from another, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name.